now I've seen a flying saucer. You've seen one? Yes, well, definitely. Unidentified aerial phenomena. To cover up our mistakes. I've met people who swear they've seen Bigfoot. <laughs> Join us for a journey into the obscure. You are now listening to The Wow Pod. Everybody. Welcome to the show. So tonight, Betsy's bringing us some scary, some, some, uh, we're gearing up for Halloween. It is, uh, it is upon us. It is that time. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. The future shows uh, for this next month, we've got more of the ghost people coming in, bringing their tools and equipment, and showing us stuff. We got we've a got, ghost hunt. We've got a ghost hunt coming up. We got to gear up for that. And I've, I'm gonna. I've, what I need to do is I need to. I've got multiple pairs of running shoes. <laughs> I don't know which ones are faster. Pick the most comfortable pair. Well, I'm gonna go time myself running <laughs> down the street. <laughs> what we need to do and videotape it. Uh huh. Is we need to find one of those speed signs uh-huh. and have run past it like they did on the office. Yeah. To test how fast they're going. I, we need to do that, and and the faster pair of <laughs> shoes, obviously, are the ones we're going to wear. I should. Uh, Christy says she'll wear a crab suit. Christy. Outstanding. That don't would be awesome. don't you put that into the universe if you don't mean it. Yes. Because we'll put you in a crab suit. Yeah, yeah, and so, and I've got to do the whole shorts. I think for that day. I'm going to do it 80 style running shorts. The shorts with the slit up the side, they're white with uh, blue piping. <laughs> they're super tight and short. A, a cut off sweatshirt where it was made out of like substantial material like it used to be back in the 80s. Tube socks, I'm thinking red. I've got blue shorts on already. Red tube socks pulled up past the calf, headband, wristband, <laughs> rainbow style. I think that will be my uniform for the ghost hunt. I'm sure that will be the fastest thing I can wear. <laughs> Makes you aerodynamic. Yes. Yes. So, Betsy, <sighs> what did you bring us tonight? Okay. So, tonight, we're talking about a fellow by the name of John Alexander Lawson. John Alexander Lawson. Yeah. So, John Alexander Lawson... Um, he's born in 1978, and he's raised in San Francisco, California. Mm-hmm. Now, from what I understand, his parents kind of bounced back and forth between North Carolina and California, but really had like a, a pretty tumultuous relationship and, you know, subsequently ended up divorcing. But the younger years of John Lawson, you know, we don't know much about him. What we can, what we can gather from the people who knew him or went to school with him was that he was bullied. Um, I mean, just tortured. His mom was a drinker. She kept a nice house, but she was a drinker, and there was this constant friction at home. So the people that knew him in his youth said that he was just weird, like. They would go to do things like, you know, I guess teenagers do spray paint things and stuff. And some people would be spray painting, you know, like stars or smiley faces. And he would be like upside down pentagrams. And, (laughs) you know, he was he started early getting into kind of the occult stuff like the the black metal and things like that. Now, he also made up lots of stories. That was another common thread. He told some people he was from Iraq. Like he wanted to be from that region. So so he just kind of, not even embellished, just totally yeah. fabricated. He said his father was a priest. Said his father died. Mm. Um, he told people he had lived in all these different states. He was trying to, I think, be relevant. Um, and it, I don't know if it... It's, you know, nurture versus nature, a little bit of both. But his mom, whose name is Cynthia, she would just, you know, she's a mom. She'd be like, yeah, he just, you know, marches to the beat of a different drum. And then hit the vodka. Yeah. And then hit the vodka. 
He was also said to have practiced harming animals during his childhood. Like, that was a common occurrence. Really? Now, that brings me to the McDonald triad. So the McDonald triad, also known as the triad. <laughs> I did picture in three clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe snapping as they walk. <laughs> the, Mac- the McDonald triad is the triad of sociopathy. It's oh, the yes. set of three factors that yeah. is that it's been suggested. If, Wetting the bed. Yes. Killing animals and, and starting fires. Yes. That if, if any combination of two or more are present together, it's predictive of later violent tendencies. And, I mean, they say it's still a theory, but huh, I would say it's a little beyond just a theory because a lot of your people who end up being serial killers it's common they sh- they share those things commonly displayed yeah so he experimented with drugs and alcohol very young as well now that's likely because it was so commonplace in his home well alcohol that would have been mm-hmm. yeah and his mom from what i understand they interviewed vice did a, a pretty good four-part series on kind of the life of John. Didn't Vice interview him t- as well? No. They by didn't. The, by the time they did they, it after right. a post-interview. Okay. Right. So his mom's friend was interviewed and she said that um, that she had tried to intervene and get him help but it ended up being much worse for him. She sent him to a mental facility and from what I understand it was just it was you know, pretty disruptive for him. Well, I imagine with his, with those personality traits, he he clashed and went deeper. Probably. Because, yeah. I mean, he was already the weird kid. Mm-hmm. So you take the weird kid and then you pull him from his norm and he becomes the weird kid who got put into a mental hospital. And then you try and put him back into his norm and it just never, it never meshed. So while he was in treatment... He was diagnosed with agoraphobia, which is kind of the fear of leaving. No, it's fear of, fear of, uh, it's fear of crowds and open spaces. Right. So he, crowds in open spaces. Right. He, he liked to be in his home and in really small groups Mm -hmm. and schizophrenic, which, you know, made sense. But his mom later said that she could no longer afford the treatment and she wanted to keep him in treatment but she just couldn't afford it it just became too cost prohibitive but people that knew the family said that 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 really wasn't the case the case was that the money was being spent on other things you know recreational Mm -hmm. using and and alcohol so his parents cynthia lawson and timothy lawson they relocate to North Carolina, kind of more permanent, instead of the back and forth, and they get divorced in 1990. Now, I think this was another catalyst because she remarries pretty quickly. So in 1990, he's probably, what, fifth grade? No, hold on, 94. He's still pretty young. He's a couple years younger than me, so he'd be seventh grade, sixth grade? Yeah. So... They split up, the dad moves back to California, and Cynthia remarries Tennessee native uh, Johnny Larry, Johnny Larry James. That's hard for me because it's like... Three first names. Three first names. Yep. So, Johnny Larry James and Cynthia get married, and they move to the house at 2749 Knob Hill Drive in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And that's where this all takes place. So the two decades after his parents' divorce, John, little John, mm-hmm. he just he just takes off on this path. It's complete destruction. He he was eighteen and a freshman in high school. Mm, because doing he perfectly normal. Yeah. Because he had failed so many times, so he just dropped out. And he he changed his name, <laughs> and and he never really 
got into details, you know, his unfortunate end didn't allow for a lot of really in-depth investigation as to why he changed his name. But he changed his name to Pazuzu Ila Algarod. Pazuzu <coughs> Ila Algarod. Algarod. And he uh, pretty much became an avowed Satanist and drug dealer at this point. <laughs> well, I am going to quickly go through Pazuzu. Pazuzu <coughs> Ila Algarod. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, Pazuzu is... Uh, it was a king of demons of the wind and brother of Hambaba and son of the god Hanbi and uh, also represented the southwestern wind, bear of storms and drought. Now, uh, Pazuzu was a... Um, was uh, he Mesopotamian? Yeah, Mesopotamian or, or he was an ancient demon. You can tell by the four wings. So it'd be a Mesopotamian demon. And also, Pazuzu is the demon in the exorcist. Yeah, so it was, Pazuzu was kind of picked up by kind of, you know, fiction. Yep. Um, these cult classics, I, I guess you would call them. The exorcist being one of them. Yep. It's, he was also in Ghostbusters, wasn't he? Uh, one of the Ghostbusters, he was. Uh, I don't know. The demon Pazuzu. I'm going to have to brush up on my Ghostbusters. I do remember it was the demon from the Exorcist, but that right there, um, these ancient gods, that's Ahura Mazda, and that's Pazuzu right there. So he's an ancient uh, demon from a, a religion that's still around in Iran a little bit, um, Ahura Mazdaism, or the Keepers of the Fire. Interesting religion. I don't need to geek out on everyone just yet. <laughs> But, so, I just wanted to jump onto that real quick because he named himself after, after a demon. After an ancient demon god. Now, I don't know, I don't know if he knew a lot about it because in the affidavit, because you have to fill out an affidavit when you change your name. He could, it could. He listed religious reasons. It, it could have been, or he could have just pulled it from the exorcist and said, he, right. Pazuzu, you know, I'm going to run with that. I'm going to do that. So, we're going to take a quick break right here. Is it news time? Yeah, to let you hammer out some weird news. Okay. We need weird news this week. Yeah. We haven't had weird news for a long time because we've been interviewing, interviewing, interviewing. Yeah. And I think there's more of that, you know, to come the, in the October. Interviewing, I think the show's going to start leaning heavy on interviewing. Um, and then when we find these fun shows, we're going to study them and set them aside. Yeah. And then, but I like the interviewing. I like to get to know what people have going on. In the spooky in Utah, we're trying to reach out to a uh, a uh, UFO hunter. We're, we want that I don't understand. We want to do a lot. Do you of just that. stand outside and? No, you put on the clothes, the orange vest, the <laughs> Elmer Fudd hat, and you talk with the with the weird, you know, W. So, anyways, what do we got? First in story. Oh no! <laughs> Police in Vietnam have confiscated an estimated. 35,000 345,000 or yeah 300 sorry 345,000 used condoms that were washed no. dried repackaged and sold as new <laughs> no give me a second <laughs> okay question one how heavy is 345,000 condoms <laughs> <laughs> Two, how much of that anti-spermicidal lubricant no. go into them? Three, what? you see the ladies rinsing out the outside and flipping them inside out? No. And then <laughs> the other side out. Oh. Uh, do we have a shortage of latex? I mean, what, what are we dealing There's with There's a question, was they sold over here? Do you have a condom in your wallet right now, young man? That may have previously been owned mm -mm -mm. and operated in Vietnam. <laughs> Where were these condom pickup locations? Did they collect them from the toilet, whose from the dump? Whose idea was this? And I need to I need to go all the way to the top. Who whose idea was this? Now I've got a question. There you know there was one lady who had the most important job of all. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. 
she had to hold them to her lips and blow into them <laughs> to make sure that that they were still sound you know because you don't want to sell bad product was that lady no doing a functions test after they had washed them all and spent that the calories to Listen. scrub them clean or or just to save time so you don't wash condoms that were unable to be used did she test those first <clears throat> Anyone who is like rinsing you, and reusing condoms you, is not doing a function you gotta, test. You gotta pick. You gotta pick off the public hair. I can't do it. And the bits of toilet paper. <laughs> I, can't, then, I can't do it. Did and, they just have a like a, a bin? And then you hold it up to your mouth. And no. You don't have to fill it up. You don't want to fill it up because you don't want to stretch the latex permanently. But oh, this makes me. A, this makes me sick. A, you have to just a little puff. You have to blow into it. <sighs> And hold it. That's the important part. You got to hold it to make sure that it it doesn't go flaccid. How did they catch these guys? How do they know? How do they know? Well, let's read on. Did they string and quarter the guy whose idea this was? <laughs> or high five him? Say uh, novel idea, good sir. No, 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 no. Okay, a video by state-owned Vietnam Television (VTV) shows dozens of bags scattered across the floor of a warehouse in the southern Bin Duong province, containing nearly. 800 pounds. That's like the weight of my Mini Cooper almost. <laughs> <laughs> of recycled contraceptive. <laughs> that is disgusting. No. <laughs> Hold on, it gets better. Police arrested one woman in the operation. You shoot and ask questions later. <laughs> she told investigators that she received 17 cents. No. For every kilogram... 2.2 pounds of recycled condoms. How much does a condom weigh? VTV said it wasn't clear how many... It's not worth it. Oh, no. It gets better. Said it wasn't clear how many reused condoms have already been sold. No. <laughs> the detained woman <laughs> told police that the used prophylactics were first boiled in water. Oh, no. Please <laughs> tell me they're not shipping them over here. Then dried and reshaped on a wooden dildo. <laughs> then they were repackaged and sold as new. I can't. The older of the owner of the warehouse told the newspaper, Toy Tray, <laughs> that they received a monthly input of used condoms from an unknown person. Just one guy was burning through that many? Man. <laughs> Dude. According to the Associate Press, police announced that they are investigating the matter and tracking down other individuals who might be involved. A health official told the newspaper that the recycled... Recycled? Recycled condoms... That post, is not recycling. That's reusing. <laughs> ...post an extreme health risk to potential mm. users. Recycling is when it's broken down and then made into itself or other things. That is not recycling. That's <laughs> not. That's but reusing. How many turtles <laughs> Did they say? have been saved from having condoms around their necks because of their diligent efforts? It, this is a green planet. We need to get. We need to get Miss oh. Cortez out there and 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 Greta Thun. Beer. This was probably Miss Cortez's idea. Greta, Look back through her post. Somebody fast. Greta Thunberg needs to come out and say, I support the condom washers. <laughs> support your local condom washer. I'm telling you, when you see them on the street, they, high five them. Bring them a, a, a donut. I don't know. But can they you imagine are. the big pots? They're stirring these big boiling pots of condoms. <laughs> That's the foam at the top. <laughs> that ain't foam. <laughs> That's so bad. It's froth, oh, but it ain't foam. That's disgusting. Where do you find this? All right, go on with the story because I got like mm. four more. Okay, so where we left off, he changes his name. And the affidavit really didn't offer any details. And, and to be fair, when you change your name, you don't they don't give you like a, a large space to fill out a, you know, a life's history on why you're changing your name. You just kind of specify... And he specified for religious reasons. So perhaps it was religious reasons. At any rate, about this time, he, um, he's been acting out, of course, since, since childhood, since he was really oh, young. I, I imagine that kid came out of the diaper just... And he hates his stepfather. It, he would be a perfect test into um, 
the mind of a man. Born this way. Yeah. He would be he would be the ultimate test into that. So his mom and stepdad, they uh, basically just like leave the house and leave it to him. They move. It's the family home. They move into another house and just leave him there. And left to his own reserves, he started to create a place. A as they as there was a lot of people interviewed in the making of several documentaries that I've watched on him and he made a place where misfits could go and use whatever do whatever and party Just kind of a, it was a, a flop house it, it was so much worse it was said that the house before him was pretty normal. As a matter of fact, his mom kept a pretty clean house. She had cream-colored carpet. You removed your shoes. He started, like, spray-painting the inside of the house. with just like. So he turned the mom's house. The mom left it to him. Okay. Where'd he doesn't get along go? with the stepdad. The mom and stepdad go buy a different house. Okay. They just split. So they just left in this house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was said that the house was pretty nice before. Pretty normal. Cream-colored carpets. You got to take your shoes off. All the things. Got a celestial room. Yeah. And he started by, like, filling it with, like, spray-painted pentagrams and, you know, just filth, trash, and other things about. And then it, it was reported that anything went at Pazuzu's house. Now, at the time, Winston Winston-Salem... They, they still kind of don't. I was looking into their history, and I, they, they've been on the same trajectory for a while, but they don't have a lot for youth to do. There's a lot of malaise. There's a lot of youth crime. There's not a lot for them to do, so they just kind of find trouble. So Pazuzu's house became like the place. Like, friends would tell other friends about it, and then they would go hang out at Pazuzu's house. He was like the weird guy in the neighborhood. Um anything went urinate defecate anywhere just just it was said that people would come and party just drop trow and drop a growler in the, corner, in the corner drop a drop a growler he had dogs running around he had cats running around well the dogs would take care of the growler they said that the dogs would sometimes eat it that is what disgusting do you mean sometimes i've seen dogs another thing second harvest so gross another thing he started to do um, was these small animal sacrifice rabbits he raised rabbits and he would sacrifice the rabbits and and it was all part of his recreating himself into this you know this special person who did these really outlandish things he was different than everyone else mm. his new identity now at this time Pazuzu Khalifa what was it again <laughs> Pazuzu Ila, Ila, Algarad, Algarad. Now, sounds like a name out of uh, out of the Call of Cthulhu. The people that surrounded him at this point claimed that he would tell everyone that he was Iraqi descent with a sat satanist mother. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, she clearly wasn't, but he also, for a brief try, br for a brief time tried to market himself as an Iraqi Muslim, especially on Facebook. Now, there's still a Facebook page. He still has a Facebook page. It's not had anything posted on it since, like, 2014. Um, and it seems pretty... I mean, I didn't go years and years, you know, back into it, but it seems pretty benign. But it was, it was said in, uh, you know, some of the pre-trial, because he never made it to trial. It was said in some of the pre-trial that he kind of tried to market himself as an Iraqi Muslim. And he wasn't... Is or this one? Yeah, no. Um, no. You have to do in Pazuzu and then Algarod. Not that one, the one above it. This There's a bunch of fake accounts that have been created following everything the one above it so it's when he's actually listed he's from sonoma he says he's the antichrist and and whatever but now 
it is thought that the reason he tried to claim the Islamic faith, um, what he actually did was he tried to mash together Luciferianism and Islam beliefs. And, <laughs> really? and he tried to market himself as that. Now, this is happening in 2002. Um, oh, Ariel said something. Said that the mom still lived at the home. Yeah, so I've heard it both ways. Um, now, I did hear that the mom would go and check on him often, and we'll cover that because he's, she... He's got a lot of what appears to be at least the writing Sanskrit named people. I wonder if they're Muslim and, and don't know... I don't know. He's, he's got some good stuff going on his page. Oh, that is cool. I actually like that. That is kind of cool. That's some creepy. But if shit. if you look at his Facebook page, it's pretty old stuff. And his what he's got listed is his wife Am Amber Algarod. Yeah. She hasn't posted on hers in a long time either. But they were not, never actually you know lawfully married. But eh, sounds like the law didn't matter much in yeah, his it life. It really didn't. We'll nope. put a link to his page in the show notes so that people can go. But if you check if you think out. about this is happening in the early two thousand two. Mm -hmm. So, he's living in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which dates back to 1753. And it was settled by a devout religious group from Eastern Europe called the Mor Morovian, or Moravians. 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 Give me a second. And they, they immigrated and settled there. So, it's still very much a religious community. Everyone is said to belong to one denomination or another. Yeah, and I'm sure, I mean, it's in the Bible Belt. I'm sure baptism's strong there, uh, evangelical. Yes. And so, I probably even a splash of Mormons. So what's happening is we have the World Trade Center towers. 2001. 2001. So Islam is also very scary. So they think that it's thought that he kind of tried to mash those two together because you know satan and he, then islam you know it became the perfect storm and he, he really for, doesn't he went for shock value and everything yes he, he just really wanted to shock people hmm. so he didn't really practice any of their beliefs he just claimed he was one well, of I'm, them i'm sure he didn't even study them to understand what they were yeah, and he also proclaimed to be a self-styled combination of Charles Manson, Anton LaVey, and Aleister Crowley. Ooh. Now, we're guessing that these things were just to More strike shock. fear. Yeah. Well, yeah, Chuck Manson. Yeah. I mean, Manchurian candidate, uh, Anton LaVey, uh, a dude that, you know... But he didn't know that. He couldn't have done the research. I thought Anton LaVey was like all powerful, whatever, until we did yeah, our research. Yeah, we dug into him. He's just a dude that he was a Wrote showman. a book. Yeah. Yeah. So he also claimed he had the power to change the weather. <laughs> so he was kind of like pushing the envelope. <laughs> Get your buddy high. Want to see me change the weather? Blow on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's windy now. How do you feel? So, oh wow, man. Along with his claims to be all of this, he also it's like it's like they have to continue to do another step and then people get adjusted and then you go a little further and then they get adjusted. He starts to alter his appearance. He tattoos his face and body with these demonic symbols and he grows dreads and it's said that while he's high on meth one night, he uses a Dremel and he files all of his teeth to sharp points. Can you imagine the pain? I can't even bite an ice cube. Oh. I, <laughs> Could you imagine the I, sound in the I, house? I can't even bite an ice cube. <laughs> I, I couldn't. Oh. It, it, <laughs> it was... The, the thought of that is, is too much. But he... He was also said that he split his tongue or had his tongue split. Now, all of this 
it became a, a frenzy. It was this crazed frenzy. Well, it sounds like a, a mob mentality at the house where it just kept boiling over and boiling over and boiling over. Right. And and we don't know. I mean, we'll get into what we what we do know, but we don't know if a lot of these things were kind of that storytelling that happens, you know, when somebody's like, you know, he's he's a devil worshiper and then the next person embellishes it a little bit more and a little bit more. You are. Anyway, I'm, I touch everything when I talk. <laughs> I'm going to get a new mic stand for Betsy <laughs> that's over here <laughs> Clear and across comes across and <laughs> wrapped in cellophane. Now, at this time, he's also telling people that he's committed murders. Oh, on that note, let's have another news break. Mm, news break. Okay, so a teacher in Flo or in uh, in France, no, loses his job. <gasps> Look at him. So, <gasps> oh, what grade did he teach? Kindergarten. <laughs> so this guy. Has his whole body tattooed, including his eyeballs. His tongue is green. He looks like a lizard. <gasps> Listen, I am all about body modification, but that is scary to me. Sylvian Helene, 35, whose body, face, and tongue are covered in tattoos, and who has had the whites of his eyes surgically turned black, was asked to switch age, age groups <laughs> when, a com when a parent complained that he gave their... <laughs> three-year-old nightmares he said last year he was teaching at the doctor mirror elementary school in palaceu oh. i should have your daughter come read this a yeah. suburb of paris when the parents said their son who was not taught by he was not taught by well Elaine. no because there's you've got no you've got no character built in he's Let's, just a scary guy you don't at the school. look like a human anymore oh my gosh so a couple of months later at the school authorities informed him informed him that he would no longer be able to teach kindergarten to their students <laughs> he thinks the decision was quite sad <laughs> dude a spokesman for what the, did you <laughs> expect to happen a spokesman for the local education authority said that an agreement was reached with elaine to move him away from teaching kindergarten. <laughs> pupils under six could be frightened by his appearance <gasps> a spokesman added now this is a juxtaposition i want to look weird also, I want to be a nurturing teacher. Yeah, that's that. Now I'm 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 confused. <laughs> oh, but he wants to still be a primary school teacher. He loves his job, and so now he teaches children from ages six and up. No longer six. Five. <laughs> you went up one year. Yeah, and he says his his pupils see past his appearance. I'm wondering if the parents do. Oh, that's terrifying. But, yeah. Yeah, he has spent around 460 hours getting a tattoo. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Look. Oh, his ears are done? Yeah, oh. yeah, he's oh. got a tattoo straight up onto his ear. He's, I mean, everything but the bridge of his nose and the eyelids are tattooed. Everything. And I'm sure he is a lovely human being. Um, oh, I can't. I can't. I wish him. That's the, that's terrifying. I wish him the best in life. <laughs> so, oh, that's right. that's well, scary. So they they say that he at this time, um, you know, makes comments to the party goers that he's killed people, and it's it's a the house smells so bad. Mm. Um. It literally... Well, I mean, you're shitting in the corner. You could probably hide <laughs> anything in that house. Well, they said that even with all the urine and the feces and the trash and all of the things in the house, that it, it had this dead smell to it. So people would arrive and ask, what is that smell? And he would say, it's the bodies in the basement. Now, nobody took him serious. So he's went, oh, sweet. There's like, yeah, Pazuzu, you know, whatever, black metal. They just never took him really serious about the bodies in the basement. Now, we don't know if he actually had bodies in the basement at this point, but he had told some of his followers 
that he had kidnapped a couple of prostitutes and killed them. Now, I don't I don't know how you get to a position where you're just like, yeah, he's crazy. He says all these crazy things, but he would never do it. Um, I, I don't know how... I don't know what the tipping point is to where you go, okay, <laughs> we need to involve the law. <laughs> like, this guy's lost well, his Well, I mean, noodle. what meth head is going to call the law to where they get the end use? That's that's the thing. He had the most vulnerable population and, and spending time around him. And they're shooting meth. Meth, in heroin. A, in a house. Whatever they can get their has, hands on. That has piles of human duke in the corner now <laughs> i have never seen human duke dry because a house is a dry environment so does it dry like a cow patty or does oh. it look like an old ashy dog turd on the yard i don't know that's yeah. that's a gross thought i don't want to know yeah i don't want to know kind of insane now you'll be surprised to hear that he also attracted quite the following of lady followers. Ooh. Hello, um, ladies. My they name like is Pazuzu. They idolized him. Oh, well, he's that bad boy. And first of all, he's he's probably shopping for teenager to yes. 30. And let's face it, we've talked about this before, the dumbest animal on earth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we could recycle this. I I should write a book about <laughs> my philosophies in life. You should. <laughs> But he was like, it was like he was finally in charge for once. He was the he was the head man, and this interests me for a couple of reasons. One, um, girls are usually very dumb, nurturing. Oh, sorry, <laughs> you jump right to dumb, but they're they're nurturing. And he was doing like small animal sacrifice, and I mean maybe they just wanted to clean his house. I don't know, but. He was said to have only bathed once a year and he never brushed his teeth because Satan would cleanse him. His shit was big. <laughs> the <biggest laughs> shit. That's funny, Christy. So he only bathed once a year and never brushed his fangs? Uh -huh. His his chisels? Yeah. And and he had all these lady followers that would sleep with him and and he called them his fiancés. So he's just walking around with all this love crust all uh -huh. over his... Love crust. Oh. Disgusting. So his mom, back to his mom, um, she, uh, she had been away from him for, for some time. And I don't know if her second marriage fell completely apart because they interviewed... Um, Johnny and and he still claims to be his stepdad, you know, even after all of this. Or if they were just separated. Oh man, I, I, who me? <laughs> uh, who? No. <laughs> what? Who is this kid you you speak of? In that house? No, oh, that wasn't my mail in the mail. But my name's on there still, huh? Well. So his mom, from what I understand, I mean, at this point, the house is. Um, you gotta know, Cynthia. If you're listening, you knew. You knew that there was something going on way back then because piles of feces, urination everywhere, piles of trash. I mean, just spray the, painted goofy shit all over the walls. The, there were cats hanging in the trees in front. <laughs> the mom come over to visit. Hello, I brought you a cat, sir. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, she actually... Um, I believe at this time moves back in with him. <laughs> so, in May of 2010, um, what's his name again? Johnny or something? The stepdad. No, the the kid. Pazuzu. Well, his original name. John. Yeah, Johnny. I can't. Buy My name is Pazuzu, Mom. <laughs> Gosh, he slams the door. That may have been A the dead argument. animal falls off from where it's pinned to the wall. So. In May of 2010, uh, there is an altercation at the home, and we're unsure if she's living there currently or if she's collecting her things, but there's an argument, and he actually strangles her to unconsciousness. His mom? Yes. So, she calls the police, and they arrest him, and I've heard it a couple of ways. One, she doesn't press charges, and he's never, you know, he's never actually held accountable for this. And I heard it another way, kind of 
sounds more legit because I looked up his arrest record and it shows that there was a misdemeanor charge uh, for a for a, a assault. And um, at any rate, you know, it's my son and I love him. My baby boy. Yeah. Huh? Did he have siblings? So he gets into that and we'll cover that. They don't talk about them and he spends no time with them. They're not a part of his life. Oh, there's probably uh, lawyers for these siblings like... We don't know them. We don't know any of that. <laughs> we don't know any. We move far away for a reason. If our name is brought up, right? We're going to sue. You know, Lifetime in or whatever channel it's on, or Vice. We're going to obliviate you. So they come to the house at this point, and these are the things that are reported at the house. You know, obviously they have to come to arrest him, and then, you know. It becomes a whole thing. So, hundreds of flies dead and alive, feces and urine that have been ground into the floor and walls, decaying animals, parts and remains, and it was said that they would, during rituals, cut themselves, drink each other's blood, and then smear it all over the walls. So, it's got this, like, crusted, rusty brown color all over the walls of dried blood. The smell... Mold, soot damaged walls and ceilings, animals in cages and carcasses everywhere, and then writings all over the walls, just like complete nonsense writings all over the walls and pentagrams and things. Oh, man. So it's a, it, it's, I mean, there's swastikas, glass on the floor, trash piled waist high. I mean, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole ass thing inside Time for house. another news break, folks. <laughs> okay, so... We're kind of kindergarten heavy today. Oh. A kindergarten teacher in China has been sentenced to death <gasps> for poisoning 25 students, including, and one of the students died last year. What? It, and and the part that Why? shocked me is it took a year for the communists, the CCP, to uh, run this through the courts, because that's, that's actually a good sign now that they're doing it. Calling her actions despicable and vicious. Her? Yes. It was a woman. Yes. The Jaizu Intermediate People's Court said Wang Yang, Wang Yun acted out. Oh man, she's going to get so mad at me because I mispronounced her name. That's too bad. And has acted out of revenge when she placed sodium nitrate in the porridge that was meant to go to another teacher's students <gasps> in March 2019. She, had she was poisoning the. The uh, other students? Yes. She had gotten into an argument with the other teacher regarding oh. student management. Yes. The fatality was reportedly a student who died after spending 10 months in the hospital. Oh, that's insane. That but, is... So she gets into an argument with the teacher and then poisons the other teacher's students. She... Uh, Purchase the nitrate over the internet. The substance is sometimes used as a food pre mm -hmm. preservative or in fertilizer and can cause health issues including vomiting, abdominal cramping, and in some cases, death. Yeah, it's, it's pretty painful stuff. Oh, mm. no. So the poor students uh, vomited all over their pants. Oh, he, just she put it in sense. her husband's glass, too? Well, I mean, if you're going to do it, you may as well off that bastard as well. I mean, just think, he probably wasn't the best of husbands. and I can't. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a lot of crazy kindergarten stories right there. Oh, I poisoning, can't. Poisoning, poisoning the kids. All right, Betsy, back to the show. I've got one more. One so, more. So, Algarod's run-ins with the laws indicate that he's got this troubled history in 2008, he was convicted of larceny, um, for which he was on probation slash parole. <clears throat> in 2011, he was accused of a misdemeanor assault, um, and his girlfriend was also accused in a separate assault on his mom. So they're just beating so the shit So his girlfriend beat up the mom also. Yeah. So a year earlier... He was arrested in connection to the shooting death of a Joseph Emmerich Chandler. So he was then 30, and this happened in Clemens, which is a nearby, um, like, suburb. <clears throat> Emmerich, Emmerich was found dead by the Yadkin River, where Algarod had allegedly indulged in black magic rituals and animal sacrifices. 
So Pazuzu would tell his followers all the time that if there was a full moon, that is the night they would kill. Now, we have to remember that most didn't believe that he actually did this because most of them hadn't participated in any murders yet. Now, Just the whole animal murder. Just the whole animal sacrifice. Now, the night Joseph was killed was a full moon, and the story as it unfolded was that Pazuzu wasn't the trigger man, that his friend Nicholas was. And Nicholas was convicted of involuntary manslaughter, which is strange. So how did the story pan out? They just took him down by the river, it's a full moon tonight, turn into a wolf, no, I can't, turn into a wolf, <laughs> it's not in me, turn into a wolf, I haven't been to France, turn mm-hmm. into a wolf, I can't, and then shoot him, yeah. or what? And Algarod was convicted and sentenced to probation as an accessory after the fact. So for not reporting it. Correct. And at this time, he was given a psyche eval, and this evaluation was accidentally released to the public. So I'm going to read you some of this evaluation, because I have it. (laughs) Yes. So it says, Mr. Pazuzu Algarod, also known as John Alexander Lawson, is a 31-year-old white male who was admitted for a forensic evaluation of his capacity to proceed on a charge of accessory after the fact to involuntary manslaughter. Now, it goes on to say that Mr. Mr. Algarod was advised of the lack of confidentiality at the outset of this evaluation, and he indicated that he understood, and he seems, you know, to, you know, to be all present and accounted for and he on admission he appeared as cooperative and behaviorally appropriate all five of him are there yeah. in that seat his hair was long uncombed braided into matted plates with pieces of metallic wire wound into the parts of the braids he has n- numerous tattoos on his face neck trunk arms and hands there's a scar in the shape of an inverted cross on his forehead <laughs> as well as faint scars on both cheeks um, Mr. Algarod had a healing burn injury on the right forearm, forearm, which he said represented a brand as part of my religion. The tips of his teeth showed intentional tapering, and he subsequently admitted that years ago he had attempted to file them to points, but they had been wore down since then. Mr. Algarod had generally poor hygiene with a notable body odor. That's not funny. <laughs> and he admitted that he bathed no more than once a year and had not brushed his teeth he in years. Like butt. Oh yeah. Mr. Algarod described his mood as nervous, while his affected appeared quite while his affect appeared quite apprehensive and anxious. His speech was otherwise normal rate, tone and volume, his hands shook, he had difficulty remaining seated. Um Mr. Algarod tended to to uh, perservate on insisting. What's perservate? Just to keep insisting that he had done nothing wrong, that he did not know why he had been sent here. Otherwise, his thinking was, you know, relatively linear and goal directed with no evidence of looseness of associations or flight ideas. Now, it goes on. There's a quick glimpse of the house in the back of this one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, We'll talk about some of the house pictures um, as Jared pulls them up. It's it's serious. It it's so serious that um, it was deemed uninhabitable. Matt calls it love crust. (laughs) That's so gross. Matt, you missed the love foam part. So the examination goes on, and. He says that he's never met his father, which is a complete lie, and he has an older half-sister whom he has also never met. We don't know if that's true or not. I'm sure she's happy that's the case. He stated that he grew up in a poor, small-town environment, moved to North Carolina when he was in his teens. He denied having ever been abused or neglected as a child, and he was unaware of any family history of mental illness. Um... He also stated that he left school in the ninth grade because that's when the phobia around people started. In general, he was a poor student, typically making F's. 
and it goes on to I mean it goes into his his past history when he was born and there's a psychiatric evaluation where he is he is you can actually pull this up online because it was leaked um, he's diagnosed with all kinds of things I mean all kinds of things the agoraphobia the schizophrenia the I mean it's it's probably what is this six pages fell out of the crazy tree and hit every branch so panic disorder with agoraphobia alcohol dependence status post possible episode of alcohol withdrawals schizotype a personality disorder alco alcoholic hepatitis abnormal cholesterol macrocystosis um, possible hyperthyroidism I mean it just goes on and on and on mm. well should we take uh, the last news break let's take the last <clears throat> this isn't break. news this is more of a I would call this one a, uh, a community service message a, a, a PSA if you will <laughs> <clears throat> Tonight is we are competing. We are up against oh, we the are. debates, the and fights. It's fight night. Yes, we're up against the debates, and uh, so I wanted to talk about who I think we should vote for: <laughs> reliable, <laughs> friendly, and masters of one-way communication. Meet the dog mayors of America. Oh, that's a good dog mayor. Number one. That's a chihuahua. She'd make a terrible yes. mayor. Frida, a female chihuahua, is may was mayor of San Francisco for a day in 2014. Huh? Let's see if there's any more on this page. Basco, Bosco, a black that's Labrador a great Rottweiler, was mayor of Sunol, California, from 1981 to 1994. Four. That's what I'm talking about. He Man. defeated two humans. Defeated two humans. Yeah, he's a Republican. Republican. <laughs> yes. I yes. Love it. Bring it on. Lucy oh, Liu. Oh, she's a good dog. A border collie was the first female ra mayor of Rabbit Hash, Kentucky. She, she served for eight for years. Eight years. Eight years. Look, she's a oh, she's a handsome lady. Okay, what else we got here? Okay. Beneth Brineth Paltrow <laughs> Brineth Paltrow is a pit bull seceded Lucy Lou as mayor of Rabbit Hash Kentucky he, in 2016 he beat out a cat and a donkey a cat and a donkey good job buddy these are all about the dogs there in Rabbit Hash of course a golden retriever Max elected mayor of Lid Little Little <laughs> Oh, is that an I Idyll Wild? Oh, Idyll Wild? Idyll Wild. Hey, good. Idy Wild. Whatever. California in 2013. Handsome dog there. Yes. Duke, a great Pyrenees. First elected mayor of Cormorant, Cormorant Village, Minnesota in 2014. Been elected three times. Dog's wearing a little mayor hat. That's a good dog. Heck yeah. That's a good boy. Pa Kettle, a bloodhound, was elected mayor of Divide, Colorado in 2014. Oh, I love bloodhounds because yeah. I love the way they bay. And the, yeah, well, yeah, you can't call the bark. <laughs> There's Frida. There's again. Frida. Frida is dolled out. Oh, she's a. And she hates everyone. <laughs> Get away from me. Rip <laughs> your face off. Gus Hall was elected mayor of Coronado, Coronado California. A lot in, in California. 2018. Yeah. Yep. Parker, the snow dog, was sworn in as the honorary mayor oh, of Georgetown, he's Colorado. He's probably yes. still the mayor. Oh. Two Februarys ago. Okay, we go down. We got Stubbs, a cat, was mayor of Talkent. Talkeetna. Tal Thanks. <laughs> Talkeetna, Alaska. Alaska. I watch all those Alaska Beyond the Wilderness shows. 20 years. <gasps> Mayor for 20 years, a cat. She did nothing. Yep. The whole time. Yep. Oh, look at that. Lincoln, a Nubian goat. <laughs> Nubian first, goats are terrifying. First mayor of Fairhaven, Vermont. Or was the mayor of Fairhaven, Vermont. The first mayor and was elected in 2019. They're just, they're really terrifying. Heck yeah. We got Clay Henry the Fourth. 
also a goat, is the mayor of Lajitas, Texas. He's a fourth generation. Fourth generation to hold office. He's so he's we got previous goats. He's gonna have to have some offspring. Pax the goat was named the first mayor of Edgewater, a neighborhood in Chicago. I have been to Edgewater. Oh, look, he's wearing a little little oh, collar and a tie. That's a good oh, goat. Oh, good goat. All right, so that's, that's a fight night I could get behind. Now that is so when you go to ride in the mayor or the president this year <laughs> pick one of these guys <laughs> animals might be played out <laughs> what would happen if you wrote in a cartoon would the president then be held as a committee to draw up what the cartoon if says enough the state of the union can the um electoral college write in the electoral college no Dang. Sadly, they have to go with them. Well, so close. If yeah, that's, that's the thing about presidents. It really, I mean, and there's some changes in the electoral college. This isn't the political. I've got a show for this, but <laughs> there's some changes in the electoral college on how uh, or proposed changes in a couple of states. Uh, Colorado being one of them, probably the the one that matters the most about how the electoral college can break away from the state's popular vote which would and just vote whatever way they did which decide. would change a lot of uh a lot of the parameters which that way the well then it takes away the, the i mean if if they're not held well this is not the political show but if they're not held then the popular vote doesn't matter well it eliminates it eliminates colorado being a state that matters if they jump in with the popular vote so Colorado would probably match um, California at the time. The reason they have an electoral college is so that um, the center, the flyover parts of the country would not be dominated by the large cities. Right. Which is without the electoral college, there would only be three places that would matter, honestly. And that yeah. would be New York. New, uh, that'd be Chicago. Cities. It'd yeah, be Miami. Cities. Well, yeah, you'd have the large cities in Florida. Florida would probably matter as a state. You'd have New York City and L.A., and those would be the three places that matter. Yeah. Which is why we have an electoral college. But anyways, we don't need to get into that. Let's get back to Pazuzu. Pazuzu. So now that this <clears throat> now that this uh, psych evaluation has been leaked, the entire community is pressing really hard to have the sheriff's office do something. From what I understand... Imagine his poor goddamn neighbors. <laughs> I know. And and from what I understand, there had been many calls placed. Now, we don't know what was done and what wasn't done, and I, I hate to disparage small-town sheriffs, but it's likely one of two things was going on. One, they were just like, he's an, it's a harmless twit. Like, why are you worried about him? Or two... Well, they the, just didn't want to get involved. Well, it, because it, what do you charge him with? It, it could also be, look, the sheriff would have to go for a warrant in front of a judge and say, what do they say? This guy's yeah. creepy. He and shits his, in his house. His house smells bad. So then, the, then they're going to be, what's the warrant for? Right. So th there was several documentaries that I watched that, that just disparaged the sheriff's department there it's it's likely a little bit of everything was happening what kicked off the end for poor pazuzu was a guy named josh wetzler now josh wetzler um was married to a lady named stacy and f well i think it was no i think it was just his girlfriend i don't think they were married but they had a child together and his life kind of fell apart and it's the it's the same old story, you know, he had bought mushrooms online and they were delivered through the mail. He was trying to make money so that he could keep his house and his ranch and farm and things. And he was going to sell them. Well, he's in an area that's really popular for drug use, so he buys these mushrooms online. Well, they come through the mail, so it's a federal offense. Yeah. So then he goes to jail and then it's it's forever a mark on his... on on his name that he he can't get a decent job and he kind of spirals out of out of control and one day he goes missing well apparently his former girlfriend Stacy said that he just went missing all the time so she didn't think anything of it until he didn't call for Christmas so he'd been missing six months mm. 
when she finally contacted, she felt something was wrong, she contacted the police. She reported him missing. Now, as Stacy starts to try to track him down, it's, there's a, there's all these little bits of information leaking from the followers of um, Pazuzu. One in particular, one follower in particular had been his friend in high school and he had hung out with him a lot and then he had decided that he needed to get it together and get out of that town, get away from Pazuzu. He joined the military. Well, he came back and um, the fiancés of Pazuzu had told him a story that that they had killed a couple people and dismembered them mm. and put them into the backyard. Mm. So he's he's kind of the he's the tipping point for Pazuzu because he you know he's found a different life and he's like yeah I'm gonna have to say something like I don't know if the guy's capable of it or otherwise but I'm gonna have to say something. So at the same time as um at the same time as Josh is missing uh, a person by the name of Tommy Welsh is also missing and they're getting the same whisperings that you know he was at Pazuzu's house Pazuzu killed him it was a ritual and and you know all the things and what what's uncovered is that Pazuzu kidnapped Josh held him in his basement for a couple of days all right we're gonna show a picture on the screen right now yeah. Is that in his basement? Looks uh, like it. Could you imagine being held there? Could you imagine doing a brisk walk through? Yeah, no. Being held there. So he, Ugh. he, it was said that he kidnapped him, held him in the basement for a couple of days where they starved him. They had him chained up. And that's likely where about the time that he was telling people, oh, the smell is just the dead body in the basement. So he just had the, the, the guy starved to death down there? No. So after a couple of days, he shot him with a shotgun. Six, I think it was eight times for Josh. And then him and his fi fiancés mm. dismembered him. Arms, legs, head, phallus. They cut all of that off. And then they buried him in the backyard. It was, it was what it, they considered it a sacrifice now what's what's happening is you're you're just your it's it's I guess common this escalation with serial killers they escalate so first he did the two he claimed to do the two prostitutes they weren't dismembered but this was after he'd been doing animal sacrifices and all these other ritual things then he moved on to Josh where he chained him up starved him you know, likely tortured him, killed him, dismembered him, and then buried him in the backyard. A couple months later, he does the same thing to Tommy. So Tommy's the other missing guy. So how many total guys? Well, they think four. Oh. Now, the remains were only found of two. His luck ran out on October 5th, 2014. The Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, assisted by the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation, the North Carolina State University Forensic Anthropology Unit and the Medical Examiner's Office executed a search warrant finally. And there had been several search warrants executed at the house based on all of the whisperings. Uh, Stacy had called the Sheriff's Department a couple of times and said, listen, this guy killed my husband. He's in his backyard. Mm. They would get a little search warrant. They would, you know, go into this backyard and they'd say, well, we don't know where to dig. You know, we dug up this spot, we didn't find anything, and they'd leave. So this is a comprehensive. And what they find is these shallow graves containing skeletal remains. Were the shallow graves, like, in his yard? Yeah. Oh. In his backyard. Now, he had gotten away with this. This was five years. They had been back there for five years. So he's five years, he's 35 years old now. And him and his... Amber, his proclaimed wife, were both charged with murder. So they're they're here. I've got the the backyard up. We're gonna zoom in. So they were just right there. And look at that. 
yeah the condition of the house it's it's torn up there's a pentagram spray painted on the outside uh uh fire flu and it just messed up so pazuzu he's uh held um he's held over for trial and he was found unresponsive in his cell about six months after he was picked up the prison officials were unable to revive him and he was pronounced dead at 4 20 a.m now on this revival try <laughs> do you try cpr with the heel of your foot is it a kick to the side of the ribs how, how do you try to revive this uh yeah citizen i i i, I don't know now ariel has done a ton of research on this and she says can you believe the first warrant they got to search his house specific in specifically in the basement area there was no sign of blood or any crimes the now, shit covered it and the cops are going i ain't looking under that's that. that's the thing i ain't looking under that i am not matter of fact I had the first time the cops went over there and accidentally dropped a gas can in a match on their <laughs> way out it would have been the best thing for everybody they they were accused of they were accused of not being thorough on several of their searches. But, I mean, they're just humans. Um, I'm, I'm sure they made lots of mistakes. And it's likely they may have found the bodies or, you know, found some kind of evidence that the bodies had been there. But it was too late to save the people. I mean, from pickup time to the time that they were dismembered and likely buried was well, within a you know, couple weeks. And if he's like pinning dead cats to the walls and all that, how do you how do you sift through all that stuff? Yeah, it, it's the worst crime scene in the history of ever. And it, it's not only that, but it's um it's a hazardous waste issue. Oh. The police doing the warrant I, now, search that's are the not thing. they're not decked out to to be in this stuff. That's the next thing. Why did they let them return to the house? The house should have been condemned. Condemned from what, them from what was written on the first one with the mold and all that. It should have been. They should have, as they walked him out, called the county and said, "You need to get hazmat down here. You need to yeah. condemn this house." Right. So they they drop. If you can't bulldoze it today, tomorrow would probably be soon enough. And they they dropped a, a ton of balls when they were. They did. So so they do deserve a bit of a. You know, there's there's a bit of ridicule that should come sure. down on the sheriff. Sure. And I'm sure the sheriff would admit that. We overlooked that. And we're not talking... I mean, Winston-Salem at the time had 200,000 people. So it's a good-sized town. So it's likely they were overworked. Yeah. It's likely they didn't take him very seriously. And 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 you fall through the cracks in a place that big. You, you fall through the cracks. It, it's not big enough to have big... Uh, police department and it's not small enough to have no police department yeah so the house was later demolished and the property was sold to the neighbor and Pazuzu wherever you ended up you dirtbag there were psychiatrists and psychologists all over the world that wanted to come and just spend time with him to try and understand into the mind oh yeah what's happening what happened um when is it you know when did it start when did you feel this way and he he ended that he ended that yeah they they didn't have a chance to pick him ariel says they even got a tip about the concrete being poured that's where josh's yeah, body that was, parts were that was on uh, that was under their um uh, th i think it was on the third warrant and their last warrant they refused to dig because the city didn't want to pay for it to be yeah. redone if it was false yeah so well, and also you've got to go before a judge and present evidence. And search warrants are funny. And it's not just that, but who are you getting the evidence from? Look, we picked up this this uh, crackhead. Yeah. He's got this story. <laughs> He's and high as shit. The judge is going, what? And and search warrants are funny creatures because you have to name in the search warrant exactly what you want to recover yeah and then it has to be approved and you can't now, recover things outside of that for a search warrant if they wanted to look under the concrete they could have wrote in there we want to look we want to dig the up the concrete for and, mm -hmm. for human remains 
Yes, to recover human remains. But I found it strange looking into some of these other, um, these other true crime. One of the reasons that there is such a lag in getting a search warrant is all the damn red tape. Like with the Lori Vallow case, it took forever to get the search oh, it warrant. Did. We're talking what? But that's two years because now? they have to include everything. They have to they two have to. laptops, three cell phones, yep. one pair well, of pants. They have to include everything. I'll bet there were full probably six or seven search warrants delivered on that yeah. because i mean then when they tracked down the phone to track down where the bodies were buried in that uh burn pit they had to get a search warrant to track the phone then they tracked the phone on this date that we are most concerned about them because these are the tie-ins to the last days these children were seen where was this phone yeah, it's use it, the ninja NSA to triangulate and satellites the, and the the crime shows make it seem like they just show a warrant and they just search through the house. Mm. That's not the case. Yeah. So it's likely there was some of that in this. It's likely that there was there was some bad policing. Um it's yeah. likely that given that they are in the Bible belt, that there was some fear. Um you know and it's likely that a lot of them just didn't take him seriously. Even his own friends didn't. What do you think caused this uh, Yahoo's uh, uh, switch to snap? I think it's the perfect storm. I think he was born with the mental conditions that... Mental conditions. Mom probably drank while he was in the womb. Uh, sure. That um, were triggered then by, you know, the behaviors of other people around might him. Might have been some neglect, you know... Uh, experience violence maybe watch the 18 too young you know it was it was it was, a, it was the 80s guys i mean i'm in the same boat i'm just lucky that you know you know mom didn't you're, drink you're a more humanitarian and, yeah yeah i mean there's just a whole bunch yeah so i i think that it was likely a lot of things i i get started on these stories and in the childhood i i first start out feeling bad for them and then I'm redeemed because they turn out to be shitbags. Well, this guy didn't have a lot of explanation in his childhood. Other than he was belittled at school, his mom drank. Apparently, she wasn't very abusive. He didn't talk about that. And there was a tumultuous relationship. 90% of people who... Mm. Okay, 99% of people who have those three factors don't end up being a shitbag. Yeah. So, I start out feeling bad. But then... You know, he did some horrible things. Like, he tortured animals. Yeah. He, he was really good at getting people to follow him, the most vulnerable misfits to follow him. And he was the Pied Piper of... Oh, yeah. Terrible yeah. things, you know? They followed him to destruction. It, it makes you wonder if... Uh, I mean, would a PSA about uh, the McDonald triad be a good PSA. That might be another video we have to do. Yeah. So that parents like, oh, my kid acts like this. Maybe I should. Yeah. And for th for those like, who have, haven't heard of it, go look it up. It's the MacDonald triad. It's still considered a theory, but it kind of does ring true. Um, there's, I guess there's no way to, you know, to guarantee, and that's why it's still considered a theory, but... Bedwetting, I guess, is probably the most common... Um, the most common uh, display out of it. So you you want to, I think the two, well, if, if your kid's out, you know, building little altars to whoever, slaughtering little animals, maybe talk to someone that... Yeah, and it, it's not it's not one, but if there's two or more. Yeah, but even then, if your kid's If he's slaughtering animals, talk to someone. If your kid's torturing animals, you know, reach out to a psychiatrist <laughs> or... You know, seek some help because that that can't be beneficial regardless in life. I mean, and from what I understand, the Tommy and Josh, neither of them really um, hung in circles with Pazuzu. They were truly innocent people. Um, do, do Tommy you, likely he knew because of they're they're guessing because of drug trades and things, and do maybe, you think maybe even they were Josh. Lured, lured over with the promise of drugs or, ha or it fun. said they claim to have kidnapped them hmm. so maybe they what? were lured there and then kidnapped and placed in the basement i don't know was his girlfriend or wife 
in on it? Uh, well, yeah, they they charged Amber okay. with murder as well. And from what I understand, she's still, you know, kind of hanging out, um, waiting for things to transpire now that he's ended his life. I think we need to... She would probably be a better... I, a better glean a better story into what happened. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if anybody actually is able to get her to talk and... Um, you know, kind of find out where this all went awry. Mm. But it's it's commonplace in small town that kind of that small town malaise to have a hangout that's not a good place to hang out. Yeah, yeah, it's very common. Well, it's probably common in large towns too. Yeah, maybe just, just harder to spot. Well, there's probably more of them in large towns, uh, but speaking of Halloween how awesome would it be to go to where that is oh. and take the ghost hunters there to see what's what yeah there, there's there got to be just so much residual garbage there yeah 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 that's got to so, be freaky for those who really want to dive in there's a couple of great documentaries uh, Vice did one where they did a lot of interviews um, there's there, you know there's a couple other documentaries done by podcasters and journalists and things on Pazuzu um he kind of ended it when he ended his life so yeah he, dirt bag he shot us all in the foot yeah Lindsay Lindsay's one of our ghost hunters that would be awesome to gather a group oh. I'm feeling road trip <laughs> let's find one closer first so that we can yeah. get there in a day um but anyways um so um if you guys like politics and what, I mean, I know we touched. We touched on, it on that a little bit today. Uh, I have another show. It's um, it's called the Twilla Happy Hour, and uh, yeah, let's uh, you know, come on over, give it a listen, and it's uh, a it's a great show. Even if you don't like politics, it's actually a pretty interesting show. Yeah, we interview a lot of uh, anyone running local. If you want to be on it, reach out. And we will throw you on. It's me and my buddy Dave. But come over and check it out. I hope it's informative and uh, you know gives you a, gives you an insight into some of the deeper stuff. We just got done talking to a guy running for state school board, so that was a pretty cool one. And also, we're trying to open up the podcast to advertisers. So if anyone listening to this yeah. wants to, local or otherwise, local wherever, if anyone wants to advertise. Uh, reach out to us either through the Facebook on the Wow Pod um, or any of the normal reach outs. And we also have an email dedicated to it. It's rapscallionradio at gmail.com. It will be in the show notes. But yeah, reach out if you want to advertise. Uh, you'll be on the ground floor. I promise it'll be affordable. But yeah. Yeah. And that's about it. Um, I hope everyone has a good week. We will be back Ooh. next Wednesday. We got some more ghost tools coming in. They're going to looking come in and forward show us. to the spooky season. Yes, it's time. They're going to show us some. This, and if if you guys have a subject where you're like, oh, I really want them to talk about that, just email us. Yeah, yeah, email. This one had a lot of people saying, "Oh, I'm so glad you're doing that." Yeah. And we would have done it sooner, but I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, it's kind of a. It's true crime. We're not really a true crime. It's weird because he was like, you know, this weird guy. So we'll cover it anyway. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, yeah. for joining us. Uh, Maggie says she's been watching the happy hour. And uh, thank you for being a, pa yes. uh, you know, a participant in it. And, you know, Christy says she loves a happy hour. If you guys have any questions, that's when we try to dig in deep on local politics. We have talked to, like, the libertarian vice president. But we really our concentration. We try to build it around local politics so if you uh if you have questions or if you know someone who's running needs an outlet to get their name out give us a call and uh we will gladly yeah. throw them on there chat with them or, or if there's if there's a particular subject that you guys are like this is a really hot button and they haven't covered it mm -hmm. reach out yeah if you notice there's uh something on the ballot coming up and we haven't talked about it throw it throw it our way we'll query it and it's you know, it's not just about our opinion, but it's about, I mean, hopefully starting a conversation where people can uh, question each other, you know, like that temple referendum. That's a mm -hmm. kind of a hot button issue here in the here in the county, in the valley. I think you guys need to revisit that. We do. We're about to uh, revisit that. And also a new batch of wine is done. So. Mm. Well, yeah, it's called Tool Happy Hour for a reason. Yep. The <laughs> Tool Happy Hour. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And we'll see you week. on Wednesday. Yeah. See you Wednesday.